welcome to Wayne State University. C2 Pipeline Innovation and Curiosity Lab. She Part Dissection. By the end of this lesson, students will be able to demonstrate proper dissection safety techniques, identify the right and left sides of the heart, identify the parts of the heart, oracles, superior vena cava, pulmonary vein, aorta, left ventricle, pulmonary artery, bicuspid and tricuspid valve. Measure the diameter of the aorta, left and right atria, left and right ventricles. Compare and contrast the structure of a sheep heart to a human heart. Safety glasses, gloves, and closed toe shoes are a must for any dissection lab. You should also have your hair pulled back and your sleeves rolled up. If available, you should wear a lab coat. The tools that you will be using to dissect are very sharp. Great care should be taken when using the tools. Never walk around the lab with a tool in your hand. When you are handling the heart, be gentle so that you don't accidentally squirt any fluids on your face or body. Lastly, this movie is set up to give you the necessary directions for the lab. Please wait until the facilitator has paused the video and given any necessary further directions before performing any actions. It is vital that you watch and listen to the video in order to have a successful dissection. Studying the sheep heart allows us the opportunity to examine a heart that is structured just like our own. Sheep have a four-chambered heart. Investigating how blood pumps through the sheep heart will allow us to examine how the heart keeps us alive. Most heart diagrams show the left atrium and ventricle on the right side of the diagram. Imagine the heart in the body of a person facing you. The left side of their heart is on their left, but since you are facing them, it is on your right. Identify the right side of the heart from the left by using two references, the diagonal line of blood vessels that run on the surface of the heart and the apex. The diagonal line provides a reference point that can be used to divide the heart into two sides. Additionally, the apex or pointed end of the heart will aid in identifying the halves as well. The half of the heart that includes all of the apex is the left side. One way to confirm that you have correctly identified the right and left side is to squeeze each half. The left half will feel much firmer and more muscular than the right. The left side of the heart is firmer and more muscular, therefore stronger, than the right because it has to pump blood to the whole body while the right side only pumps blood to the lungs. Before you squeeze the heart, make certain that it is facing down so that any fluids do not squirt at you. Pause the video at this time to identify the sides of the heart. Now turn the heart so that the right side is on your right just as if it were in your body. Examine the flaps of darker tissue on the top of the heart. These ear-like flaps are called auricles. The auricles of the heart are wrinkled portions of each atrium that protrude externally to form a pouch. This structure is sometimes referred to as the atrial appendage. The auricles function as a reservoir for the atria. The term atria is plural for atrium and refers to both the right and left atrium collectively. Pause to locate the auricles. Now, place your heart in its original position with the left atrium and ventricle in your right hand. Locate the large opening at the top of the heart next to the right auricle. This opening is the superior vena cava. The superior vena cava brings blood from the top half of the body to the right atrium. At this time, you will stick a probe or your finger down the vessel and you should feel it open into the right atrium. Pause to let everyone locate the superior vena cava. The inferior vena cava brings blood to the heart from the lower part of the body. It is a little down. The superior vena cava brings blood from the top half of the body to the right atrium. 
At this time, you will stick a probe or your finger down the vessel, and you should feel it open into the right atrium. Pause to let everyone locate the superior vena cava. The inferior vena cava brings blood to the heart from the lower part of the body. It is a little down and to the left of the superior vena cava. You will insert your thumb into this vessel and your index finger into the superior vena cava. You will be certain that you have entered the inferior vena cava as your thumb and finger will be able to touch. Your thumb should lead into the right atrium along with your index finger. Pause at this time to locate the inferior vena cava. While observing the inferior vena cava, you should have also noticed another blood vessel next to the left auricle. This is the pulmonary vein. The pulmonary vein brings blood from the lungs into the left atrium. Pause to locate the pulmonary vein. The aorta takes oxygenated blood from the left ventricle to the rest of the body. There has a right and left ventricle referred to collectively as ventricle. The ventricles are the lower chambers of the heart. The aorta branches into more than one artery right after it leaves the heart, so it may have more than one opening on your heart specimen. Look carefully at the openings and you should be able to see that they are connected to each other. Pause to locate the aorta. Just behind and to the left of the aorta, there is another large vessel. This vessel is called the pulmonary artery. The pulmonary artery takes blood from the right ventricle to the lungs. Notice in the picture that the left atrium is on the left side. This means that the side of the heart that is facing you would be the dorsal or back side. Pause to locate the pulmonary artery. Just behind and to the left of the aorta, there is another large vessel. This vessel is called the pulmonary artery. The pulmonary artery takes blood from the right ventricle to the lungs. Notice in the picture that the left atrium is on the left side. This means that the side of the heart that is facing you would be the dorsal or back side. Pause to locate the pulmonary artery. Now that we have observed the heart externally, let's begin to look at its internal structure. Insert your dissecting scissors or scalpel into the superior vena cava and make an incision down through the wall of the right atrium and ventricle as shown by the dotted line to the left in the picture. We will pause to make the cut. Now that you have made the incision, pull the two sides apart and look for three flaps of membrane. These membranes form the tricuspid valve between the right atrium and the right ventricle. The tricuspid valve was named so because it has three cusps or flaps. This valve allows blood to enter the ventricle from the atrium, but prevents backflow of blood from the ventricle into the atrium. Cordy tendinia or heartstrings are the tendons that connect the papillary muscles to the membranes of the valve. The valve acts much like a door that opens in only one direction. The tricuspid valve is one of two atrioventricular valves, also called AV. The right AV is called the tricuspid valve. Pause now to locate the listed items. Remember that the pulmonary artery is just behind and to the left of the aorta. Locate the pulmonary artery once again. After the video is paused, Insert your probe into the pulmonary artery and see it come through to the right ventricle. We will pause for a moment to ensure that everyone has located the pulmonary artery. You will make an incision through the pulmonary vein to open the left atrium and ventricle. At this time, we will pause to make the second incision. Locate the mitral valve or the bicuspid valve between the left atrium and ventricle. This will have two flaps of membrane connected to papillary muscles by the cordy tendinia, just like the tricuspid valve. The mitral valve is the other atrioventricular valve that prevents blood from flowing back into the atrium from the ventricle. You should also locate the cordy tendinia, papillary muscle, and the left ventricle. 
we will pause to locate these parts of the heart. The final incision will be through the aorta. Insert a probe into the aorta and observe where it connects to the left ventricle. Make an incision down through the aorta and examine the inside carefully for three small membranous pockets. These form the aortic semilunar valve, which prevents blood from flowing back into the left ventricle. We will pause to make this incision. Locate the semilunar valve and the cusp of the valve. Examine the inside carefully for three small membranous pockets. These form the aortic semilunar valve, which prevents blood from flowing back into the left ventricle. We will pause to locate these parts. This concludes the sheep heart dissection. We hope you have enjoyed your lab.